what Becky and I are going to demonstrate right now is uh, passive range of motion. And even if you get a physician's order that says that you need to do range of motion or the OT asks you to, you always need to start at the scapula, even though the physician's order might say passive range of motion of the upper extremity. So you always know that your starting point is going to be the scapula. And what you want to make sure of is you just want to make sure that the scapula is moving well, because if it's not moving well, you can actually do more damage than you do good if you go ahead with range of motion. So the first thing I'm going to have Becky do is to sit up really tall, if she can. And I'm just going to feel for her scapula, and I'm going to go through some of the motions that I know the scapula can make, which is elevation and depression. That feels like she's moving really easy. I'm going to ask her right now just to relax with me and move. Just let me move her instead of her trying to move. So it feels like it's really mobile that way. Okay. And I'm going to make sure that it's mobile in protraction and retraction. Okay. And I can feel her scapula slipping out from underneath my fingers so I know that it's moving really well. Now there's a good assumption that that Upward and downward rotation will be free as well, as long as those few two motions are free. And we're going to take a look at those whenever we start doing range of motion. So I'm going to have Becky, Becky sit up, uh, lay down by me. And you notice how easily she did that. Elder patients make that's a little more difficult. Okay, so again, I'm going to start with I'm going to start with the shoulder, and I'm going to do each motion ten times. So we're going to start with. I'm going to start with shoulder flexion. So I'm just going to, again, I'm going to have Becky relax and or just let me have your arm as much as you can. Okay? And while I'm, while I'm ranging her into shoulder flexion, I'm going to make sure that her arm is externally rotated because if not, internal rotation is uncomfortable. Okay? I'll give you an example of that. If we have Becky turn really all the way inside and then try to come up, it's going to be painful somewhere throughout the range. Tell me, Becky, when it gets painful. Does it? No? <laughs> But that's about as far as I can go. Okay. Yeah, so a lot more comfort in external rotation. Now, how do you make sure of that? One of the ways is to make sure that the form is supinated while you're, while you're doing this range of motion. It's an easy way, kind of a cheater way. Okay, now Becky's job is to be loose and let me range her all the way up. Okay, I don't feel any kind of, any kind of bony problems at the end of feel of the range. Okay, it's just really smooth. And I'm going to try to get Becky to watch what we're doing the whole way. I might even get her to count. Could you count how many that was, Becky? How many is that? Eight. This will be number four. Okay, and I'm gonna get her to watch throughout the whole way. And sometimes I might ask her uh, to tell me which way it's moving, up or down. So shut your eyes, Becky. Good. Now, which way is it moving? Down. Moving down. Good. Tell me when we hit the mat. Feel it, okay. Good. Keep counting. Six. Good. Now open up and follow with your eyes all the way. Open up and follow as much as you can until it disappears from your sight. Still feel okay? Okay. How many? Six. Two more. stop. 